nobody wants to be less than they think that they are. And it's because of our prideful nature, which is wicked and sinful. And you know what? Satan likes to take the things that we believe by choice because of rebellion, because we don't like God being smarter and wiser and more powerful than us. And he helps us with our unbelief and gives us logical, although unfounded reasons, to believe lies about God and about truth. And the Bible says if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. And friend, it's a fact. It's not hid to a believer. Mm. And it is true that anyone who wants to believe in God and wants to know Him can. The Bible says He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. You seek God and you want to know Him, my friend. You can, you will. You know, in my soul winning, I've done away with arguments and evidences and proofs and just got to the heart of the matter. Amen. I've begun to speak to the soul of the person instead of to the answers and the things that they say. And I just speak to the things that I know are true. Somebody says, I don't believe there's a God. I say, I don't believe you. God says that you know that He exists. And so let's just go ahead and put away that argument and get to the fact. You don't like God. That's what the Bible says about you. Somebody says to me, uh, Brother Price, you know, I just have a really hard time uh, understanding how a God who's loving could send people to hell. And you know what? I know what the Bible says about that. Uh, they think that they're more righteous than God Himself. And they think those individuals are the same ones who are offended that somebody could get away with some sort of sin. And they don't recognize the simple truth that if God were to destroy sinners, they'd be dead. And they wouldn't survive judgment any more uh, than they wish that anyone else could. And many people are angry with God and they say God's not good because He lets sin happen. My friend, God's long-suffering and that's because of His mercy. But He's a righteous judge and He'll judge all sin. Matter of fact, He judged my sin in the person of Jesus Christ. Christ died because of my sin. I didn't get away with anything, my friend. Jesus took my punishment, took my place, and He took yours as well. And any kind of reason, any kind of excuse somebody tries to give for not believing in Christ, my friend, understand this, it's hid because of a heart's attitude of unbelief and because they do have an, an enemy of God who hates them and wants to destroy them, who helps to blind the minds of them which don't believe. Now, uh, the, the uh, difference then uh, of the ministration of the Old Testament, it's open and straightforward. There's nobody pretending to know God. Hey, it's real. There's a reality of it. In verses 2 through uh, 4, we see this. And the second thing we see is, uh, in the life of a believer, there's no selfish or hidden motive. The Apostle Paul shared, he said, as a minister of the New Testament, I don't have a personal motive. There's not something for me to gain in controlling the church at Corinth or in preaching the gospel that I preach. By the way, my friend, I dare say the Apostle Paul would be no more popular in this day and age preaching the gospel that he preached than he was in the time in which he lived. Uh, did folks receive... The gospel and the truth of it, yes, they did. Were multitudes, upon, thousands upon thousands saved? Yes, they were. But the Apostle Paul was nearly killed just about any place he went. And he certainly wouldn't have been a popular preacher. But he preached the truth, my friend, and he didn't preach it so that he could be wealthy. And many times he gave testimony of uh, being careful not to be burdensome to different ministries and different churches. When he, and when he himself testified, I could have been. And friend, if anybody could have been a high rolling fancy preacher, the Apostle Paul probably could have done that. But of course, God wouldn't have endorsed him in that way. And so he says, we've renounced the th hidden things of dishonesty. We're not walking in craftiness nor handling the Word of God deceitful. This isn't something that is going to benefit us. We don't have some kind of a hidden secret motive. And Christian, let me ask you a question. What's your motive in winning the lost? What's your motive in winning the lost? Is it so you can get a signature in your Bible or a notch on it, if you will? Or is it because you understand that they're going to hell and that they need Jesus Christ and that you have a compassion for the lost because you love souls the way that God wants you to? The Apostle Paul said, I don't have a motive in trying to manipulate or control you. And friend, I want to say to you what he, he is referring to in 2 Corinthians is he had condemned their sin. He said, there's division in the church. And he listed six reasons why there was division in the church at Corinth. And he said, if you don't get it straightened out, I'm going to come there and straighten you out. And they got mad about it. And they got right. And the Lord used him. But he wasn't a popularity preacher. And he's sharing that with them. He says, hey, my point isn't to preach what's popular. And Christian, there's a wonderful relief when you grow in maturity to the place where you're not concerned about how you'll be received so much by man as you're concerned about how God in heaven views you. Yeah. And friend, I just want to say you can find anybody that will agree with you 
If you want to live in sin, you can go to pastor and he can show you what's in the Bible and then you can go to another pastor and he can show you why it's not so. And that's a fact. You can uh, find anybody that will confirm that what you think is true is, and right is right, except that the Holy Spirit of God won't be a witness to that. And the Apostle Paul said, hey, we're not handling the Word of God deceitfully. We're not walking in craftiness. We don't have some kind of a hidden motive. And Christian, I want to say to you, you ought to examine your motives as you live for the Lord and as you preach the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Find out what your goal is and that will help you with your motive, by the way. You know, what is success in the life of a believer? What would be success for you? What would make you successful in the ministry that the Lord has called you to? And you ask yourself what success is, and you find out if that aligns with what God says is success, and you'll find out what your motive is. You'll figure out whether you have, uh, you just want to preach the gospel and be faithful, or whether or not you're trying to accomplish something that brings glory to you and not to, to God. And that brings us to our next point in verse 7. The Apostle Paul says, he makes a contrast between light and darkness, between uh, the God of this world and the God... Uh, who's out of this world, the God in heaven who has sent Jesus Christ. And in verse 7, he said, We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. What treasure is he speaking with? of? Now, what earthen vessels is he talking about? What's the earthen vessel that the treasure is contained in? Our body. The physical body in which we live. He refers again to it in chapter 7 when he talks about our earthly house of this tabernacle. If it were dissolved, we have a house not made with hands. It, or a building, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Thank God that we live in a physical, fleshly body that is carnal. The Bible says, but living in it and dwelling in it, we have spiritual life in Christ. The new man, as the Scripture refers to it. And not only that, but we have God's Spirit living and dwelling in and communing with our Spirit and teaching us that we're the children of God. The Apostle Paul said, The excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And he's speaking of the effectiveness of the Gospel which he preaches. And of course he is giving the glory to God and uh, sharing with the believers at Corinth that the power that he had had as an able testator or as a testament to the church at Corinth that had changed their life wasn't because of him. It was because of God's power in his life. And friend, you'll never accomplish anything for God in your strength. Throw away your personality test that try to say what your spiritual gift is so you can mm. figure out how God can use your talent. My friend, God doesn't need talent. When he saves you, he gives it to you. The things that you're able to do, listen, you've got a good personality, figure out a way to win souls without it. Because the sure thing, if you did it, God didn't. That's right. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it, Christian? That we can have God's power in bodies that are not going to go to heaven with us because they're sold under sin. I'm going to die and I'm going to go to heaven, my friend. I can't take this body with me. I'll tell you why, because it's corrupt. But living in this corrupt body, I have God dwelling in me. God's Spirit and the indwelling Christ living in me. So do you if you're saved. What a treasure it is. Then if you accomplish anything for God, you won't be able to take credit for it. The excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The Apostle Paul begins to conclude this portion in the Scripture about the Gospel by saying what it enables him to accomplish himself. Here, up to this point, he is speaking about the power of the gospel toward them. The way that God has empowered him to have a ministry toward the church at Corinth and toward uh, the, both the lost and the saved. And now he's going to speak about the gospel of the New Testament and how it's personal to him. And here's his description. We're trouble on every side yet not distressed. I said, we've got all kinds of problems, but we're not worried about it. He said, we're perplexed, but not in despair. you got all kinds of problems, what are you going to do about it? He says, well, I don't know what I'm going to do about it. Well then, are you going to panic? No, he says, not in despair. He says, persecuted. I said, but not forsaken. I'm not alone. Cast down, but not destroyed. He says, always bearing about in the body 
the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Now, brother.